Hello again! I have decided to update this video due to the fact that the previous one had many audio issues where it was too quiet. There was also a few minor mistakes that I just want to correct. So, uh, please enjoy the updated video. In today's video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to set up a game for running Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition on the virtual tabletop service Roll20. I'll be covering the following topics in order, and you can check them out as timestamps in the description of the video to skip to where you want and to use them as a reference as you need. So I will go over setting up the game, inside the game, adding a map, creating and setting up tokens, assigning characters to the tokens, using the character sheet, rolling dice, and rolling f and adjusting initiative. So feel free to skip to wherever you need, or you can watch the whole process sequentially. It's up to you. Uh, let me know what you think of the video in the comments afterwards, and enjoy. First things first, I'm going to show you how to set up your game in Roll20. So, before all this happens, you need to make an account and log in. After that, you need to head to the Create New Game tab and click on it. Once it opens up, you can set your the name of your game and what character sheet you want to be using as a template. So I'm just going to call it the Crash Course, and I'm going to type in 5e and just pick the standard 5e sheet. You can customize that to however you wish. I prefer the standard one because it is just standard. Click create your game when you're ready and it should bring you to the game page. Now before you launch, um, you want to set up the settings in your game to be how you want them to be, instead of having to adjust it on the fly or when things come up. So to do that, you're gonna wanna go to the settings tab, go to game settings, and then you can adjust things as you wish. You can add a background image, you can allow players to import their own characters, um, you can adjust the compendium, so make sure that it's set to D&D 5th edition. If it's not, then people won't be able to access uh, the content that you have access to, for example, the rules and stuff like that. Make sure you save that. You can adjust the character sheet you're using, you can adjust the role queries, which I recommend doing because you don't really want it to roll with advantage every time, I don't know why that's the default, but it is. So I just switch it to Advantage Toggle. Uh, you can also turn on auto roll damage if you want. I find it's nice because it makes things a bit quicker. Uh, what else is there? So let's just click Save for now. There's a lot of other settings you can tool around with as you wish. Um, what I usually set up is the token settings, the de default token settings, because that just makes things easier. When you drop a token in, it's going to be set up how you want it already. You don't have to do all this for each individual one. So I usually set the bar to compact so that players can see the health bar uh, of the enemies, but they don't know the exact number. They just know the relative damage of it. So they don't have to ask. They can just see it. But if you don't want that, that's totally cool. You can enable it as you want. So to turn that on, you just want to click this into C. If you don't want it, take it off. That's it. I usually make the names enabled so that when players type in their character name or they see an enemy, I can type in the name and it'll show up for them. You can also adjust Fog of War to be automatically enabled, all that business, but it's pretty well set up for as you wish. Just make sure you save it at the end. And with that, your game is now set up. You can click on the name of it to head back to the main game page, and then you are set to hop into the game. Moving right along to getting inside the game, to do that, you click Launch. And it should send you into the virtual tabletop page. So you're going to see a few things as soon as you jump in. Uh, down here where my camera is, I will move it out of the way, you'll be able to see icons of each player and yourself. There the video can show up if you have that enabled, and I'll show you how to adjust that in a second. And the size of the nameplates as well. So I'll just move myself here. So you'll see on the left-hand side, as a GM, you have more options. However, there is, so there's the select and move tool, the pan view. You can adjust what layer you're on. 
You can draw stuff if you want. You can draw a weird face. Um, keyboard shortcuts do also work, so you can just hit Control-Z to get rid of those sometimes, or you can just select and delete. There is the zooming tool. It's also over here. There is the, this is a really, really handy tool for players and GMs, is that you can measure out the distance of things. So you can see how far a creature can move, how far a spell would go, things like that. It's the little circle with the ruler in it. There's also this tool, which is the hiding areas in the fog of war tool. There's the turn order tool. There is the dice roller and help. But for now, we're just gonna focus on a few things at a time. First things first is what I always do is I head to the settings and I just make sure everything is in order. Most of these things you can kind of adjust as you want for your personal preference. I'd say the most important thing to check is your video and chat options. So you wanna make sure that these are set to be your know, devices you're using. If you're using Roll20 as your software for audio and video, if you're using something else, you don't want people to have an echo or like to hear you twice. So for example, if you're using Zoom or Discord for voice and video, make sure you turn these broadcast and receive options as to nothing or video or voice only depending on the extent that you wanna use Roll20. And then click reconnect and it should refresh for you and then you'll be all set. That's the main thing that you wanna check. The next thing is that you might have a smaller monitor or a laptop and you don't want your avatar to be this big. And once there's three or four on the screen, it starts to clutter things. So what you can do is you can just go to player video and avatar size, and you can just make that names only. You can make that small, regular or large. It's totally up to you. I usually go with regular because I have a decent size monitor and it doesn't take up too much space. And so now you're ready to get going. The next the main thing we'll cover is adding a map. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so with that, I'm just gonna move my screen back here. It's fairly straightforward. The difficulty is making sure it's aligned properly and effectively for your use. So let's find a map. I'm just gonna type in D&D 5e battle map. And what you're looking for, I mean, depending on the style that you want, but if you want something fairly generic, there's a lot of good resources out there. I find these ones by neutral party are really really nice really high quality so you just want to open that up you can save that to anywhere on your computer that you want i usually just go to desktop because i'm lazy and now there's two different ways you can add it in you can go to your art library and go to my library and upload if you want or simpler is that you can just go to your desktop you, know, you can you won't be able to see it but it's over here and you can click and drag it onto the tabletop and within a few seconds it will upload However, it uploads generally to the token layer if you don't have that preset. So what you want to do is right click the image and send it to the map layer. So now tokens cannot adjust it. Then you want to switch back to the map layer and move it around. So I'd suggest starting in the top left and then click and dragging it out to fit your tabletop map. So it should snap to grid, move it around. However, the problem is that our grid lines are not quite on, we can't get them to line up properly. So to do that, what you wanna do is, first things first, to make it a bit easier on you to differentiate between the Roll20 grid and the map grid, is go to your page toolbar, go to the page settings, and go to the grid color. I usually make it dark blackness and hit okay, and make the opacity a bit more. So now I can tell those are the grid lines of the Roll20 and these are the grid on the map. So, um, now what you want to do is you want to find a space on your map in the back that is a three by three spot that is easy to see. So I'm going to select this spot here. Now to align it, you right click, go to advanced and align to grid. So you make sure this move tool plus sign is on the cross of where the lines are meeting on your map, not on the roll 20 grid on the map. So you're going to click down and drag it out so you have a three by three section, just as the tool says, and then make sure the cross in the middle of your move tool is on the cross of where the lines meet, and release and align. And look at that, that's pretty close. For any fine adjustments, or for anything that you wanna move and you don't want it to snap to the grid, you wanna click and hold your mouse key and press and hold Alt, and you'll be able to move it slightly and then release both, and it should lock it into place for you. So make sure you don't move it around, head over to the toolbar and head back to the objects and tokens. And then your map is all ready to go. 
Now for sm small minor adjustments, like let's say you want to get rid of these excess squares at the bottom, you can go to the page toolbar, go to the page settings, and you can make the height three pixels less. So you go one, two, three, and boom, now they're all gone, nice and neat. And your map is all ready to go. Now for creating and setting up tokens. So you have a couple options initially. There are in the art library, in the premium assets, I believe most free accounts come with free assets. So you can peruse these and see what things you like. For example, if there's characters, things like that, there's maybe an elf ranger that you like. The only problem with these that I have personally is that these are from the top down view and they look kind of wonky sometimes and I don't really like them personally. So I'm going to delete that. And what I use is I use a tool called Token Stamp. It is a website that you can upload an image to and it turns, in you, turns it into a token for you. All you have to do is find one that you like. For example, I typed in character art and this guy's kind of cool. So let's save him to our desktop, go to the Token Stamp and choose the image. So it should plop up for you and now you can set it however you wish. So I usually do like a head, torso shot like so then you just hit download call it pc token or whatever you want and now just like you added the map onto the roll 20 tabletop you can find your oops you can find your token click and drag it over and it will upload for you so it's quite large just resize it like any other tool and boom we have our first token on the board what you can do as well with them is you can adjust the settings that you have. You can add a name and the advanced features you wish. You can also add conditions to them with this circle filter feature and you can make them dead, which you don't really want. You can make them buffed up. Um, maybe they are entangled, things like that. You can also add colors to them if you have multiple of one creature, which is quite nice. And there you have it. As well, if you want the bars to appear, you want to go back to the settings. And let's say we adjust the health. Let's make it 10 out of 10 HP. You want to make sure that this bar is seen so that everybody can see it. And you can see here it's automatically set to compact from the default settings. So there you have it. He has a little green bar above his head and that signifies his health. And when you take away from this, let's say he takes three damage, the bar goes down. Kind of hard to see in the green. Let's put him over here. And let's say he receives three healing, you adjust it, you press enter, and now he's back to full. Assigning characters to tokens is quite easy. All you need to do is you have to go to the journal tab and create a character. We're gonna call this guy Tiv Shakri. Sure, let's use the auto-generated name. So before you assign the token, you want to make sure the token's all set up. But let's make sure the character sheet is set up. So you can add the art by clicking upload, and it should go there. You can also edit who this uh, character is controlled by so that only certain players have access to them, uh, just me. Um, you can also display it to be in journals, so when people click on it, they'll see the artwork and any biography the player decides to adjust. So let's hit save and head to the character sheet. So now you can use the character mancer, which runs you through character creation. It's very basic and it only covers SRD content. So use it as your leisure. You can make them an NPC or you can edit it directly. Let's just go edit directly for now. And we'll get back to this later. So now that this has some um, codes to draw upon, you can click X on this, head to the token and click token settings. And now you can represent that character, show their nameplate. And so now this token is associated with that character sheet. And now you can go ahead and make this HP. So now when the HP is updated on the character sheet, it'll show up here as well. And I generally make the blue one AC. It's just nice to have that at a quick glance. You can make the red uh, passive perception, passive wisdom if you like, just to have that at your disposal as a DM. And now you hit save and it should be all set up.
So using the character sheet is a bit of a different story. You want to open it up here. Here's a quick tip too. If you are a player or a DM and you have uh, some sort of NPC sheet or character sheet you want to have readily available, you can double click the top bar here and it'll become opaque. And then you can double click it again to bring it back and it'll always stay in that little shortcutted area. So that's quite nice. So now you can go ahead and adjust their stats. Let's give him 12s and everything because why not? And as you can see, it automatically updates the various, let's give him 14 charisma, sure. It automatically updates all the skills depending on what class they have. It should populate automatically. Like let's say they are a sorcerer because they look like a sorcerer. It will automatically add their saving throws and their hit dice for you, which is super nice. So they probably shouldn't have this. They should have seven, I believe. And so now you can, depending on what background they choose, what skills they choose, they'll add the proficiency bonus automatically, things of that nature. There's also the spells and the bio, which you can fill out as you wish. The main thing that I want to show you is a really nice handy feature that will make things a lot easier for character creation. So let's say you're choosing equipment and you want to find a quarterstaff. You can head to this eye icon, the compendium, and you can either search it up or go to the item section. So if I type in quarter staff, should give me proficiencies for it and also equipment. So if you want to add that onto this character, you click and drag it over and it will add it in. And it also gives you the attacks. You don't even have to fill anything out. It's all filled in for you, super nice. That also works with the spells, which is super nice because spells can be quite wordy. Let's say they are, it's a sorcerer, right? So they probably have burning hands. Type that in, hit enter. Look at that, there it is. Now you click and drag that over and boom, you've got burning hands. And so if you want to use the character sheet, all you have to do is click on any of the words and it'll roll the dice for you. Let's say we click a quarter staff attack and oh, look at that, we crit. Great, great character already, perfection. It'll automatically roll the dice for you and the damage, super handy. And same goes for spells. If you click Burning Hands over here, it also shows you the damage and the 15-foot cone. I do not believe they have a saving throw yet for some reason. It's up here, so you just have to reference that. Some of them will display it, some of them will not. And you can also tweak them individually by clicking the little eye icon and clicking this. So you can adjust things as you want. Saving throw. Let's make that dexterity because I believe that's what it is. So now that I've added dexterity saving throw to the burning hands, if I click it, it'll show the spell save at DC as well. So that is how you fill out the character sheet and use it. As for rolling dice, there are three separate ways that you can do it. One of them I've showed you using the sheet. Uh, another way is using the dice rolling tool over here. So you can find the dice that you need, goes all the way up to D100, and you can select how many you need to roll, let's say 5D12, and it'll roll it for you. There's also the advanced dice roller down here, and that'll let you add a modifier as you need. So let's say we're adding a six, you can click roll, and there you go, D20 plus six right there. It'll also save a history of your last 10 rolls. So if you're rolling the same attack roll or the same damage roll over and over, it'll keep it for you. So you can just hit reroll and there it is again. Very, very handy. You can also type in the code, which is slash roll or slash R, and then you type in D and the dice number. So D20, I'll roll it. Or if you want multiple, you can type slash R, 1D6, and there's 1D6. There are a lot of little codes and things that are involved with Roll20, but those are the bare necessities that you need. If you are a DM and you want to keep your rolls hidden from your players, you type slash GM roll, and then whatever dice you need, 2d20, and it'll show up as yellow, which means that only a GM can see it, which is very, very handy to have. And finally, if you are going to have combat, which will generally happen in a session, you'll need to learn how to use the turn order tool. So with that, it allows you to add tokens onto there and adjust the turn order as rounds go by. So to do that, we need a couple more tokens. I think I have some stored up here. Let's use, oh, that's the ugly strad. Let's use the soldier and 
Matthäus. So, to add tokens manually onto the turn order, you want to right click them and click add turn. Let's say he has a 15 initiative, the soldier has a five, and let's, let's add our uh, player character on there. So you can either add them on manually, but a handy feature that players will have is that each person can make sure their token is selected and click initiative on their sheet and it'll roll it for you and add the mod automatically. It saves a lot of time instead of having to manually type them in and sift through the rolls and things like that. However, our characters are out of order for their turns. You want to click this gear and then click sort options numerically descending and it'll sort it from highest to lowest so that your turn will go by. And once you just click this arrow, it'll pr progress and the turn will go by. And so that is how you use the initiative tool. Thank you very much for watching my video. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback or anything to say. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you for your time. Have a great day.